Grep is a great command line tool when you need to quickly search for something, but some of its behaviors related to regular expressions can be very confusing and surprising. In this video, I'll discuss five of these issues that seem to come up fairly commonly. Here's a file containing a few lines of text. Let's assume that we want to use grep to find all lines that contain the word hello followed by the word world. Therefore, we want to match all of these lines. You might consider using a grep command that looks something like this. As you can see, this found all the lines we expected. However, you might now consider adding the additional requirement that there be at least one character between hello and world. Ideally, you want to remove this line from the match. Since you know that star is a regular expression pattern for zero or more, and plus is a regular expression pattern for one or more, you could try replacing the star with a plus. But now, it doesn't match anything at all. What's going on here? The answer can be explained in terms of the different regular expression modes that grep supports. By default, grep uses BRE, or basic regular expressions. If you don't specify any command line flags, by default, grep will use BRE, or basic regular expressions. Grep understands three different versions of regular expression syntax, and if you want the results you expect, you should learn a little bit about the difference between them. To put it briefly, if you want modern regular expression support, you should use the dash p flag with grep using Perl compatible regular expressions, although this is not supported in all versions of grep on all operating systems. Unfortunately, the confusing behavior we just saw with the star and plus characters turns out to be much more complicated than you might imagine. As we just saw, running grep without any command line flags uses basic regular expressions. The official standard for basic regular expressions is very old and is extremely primitive. The official standard doesn't even have support for the plus operator. The only repetition operator that's officially supported is the star. To make things even more confusing, grep also supports the dash e flag for extended regular expressions. The name extended might make you think that this is a more modern version of regular expressions, but it's really not. Extended regular expressions do support the plus and question mark operators. The reason that this can make things so confusing is because internally, GNU grep doesn't distinguish between basic regular expressions and extended regular expressions. It makes sense why they would design it this way, because extended regular expressions is almost an exact superset of basic regular expressions. The only difference is that with basic regular expressions, some characters need to be escaped in order to be special. But with extended regular expressions, they must not be escaped in order to be special. This situation can lead to very confusing behavior. For example, here's what we get with the star and the plus with basic regular expression mode, not using escapes. And here's what we get when we do try escaping these characters. This seems very confusing because when we used the plus quantifier with basic regular expressions, we didn't get any of the matches that we expected. But with the star, we did. Now it's the opposite. To try and make sense of this, we can look at the standard for basic regular expressions. Looking at the standard for BRE, we can see that the interpretation of ordinary characters that are escaped when they don't need to be is undefined. Since escaping a character that's not in this list in BRE is undefined, this is actually reasonable behavior. If we instead try these examples with the dash E flag, we get something a bit more sensible. These examples also do what we expect when we use the dash P flag, P standing for Perl compatible regular expressions. We can see the same kind of confusing issue when using range quantifiers with grep. In this example, we're going to use grep to extract all instances of exactly three A characters from this echo statement. Normally, we would write a regular expression to match exactly three A characters just like this. But since we're using basic regular expressions, we have to escape the braces. When using basic regular expressions, the braces must be escaped. If we don't use the braces, the grep will search for a literal match. However, if we add the dash E flag to this example, it doesn't work anymore. In this case, grep searches for a literal match only when we escape the braces. If we remove the escapes, we'll now get the matches that we expect. In the next example, I'll show you some trouble you can run into with grep with unexpected shell interpolation. So here I have a file with a couple lines of text in it. Let's go ahead and use grep to search for all lines of text that contain the word date. Now, let's assume we wanted to use grep to search for this instance of the word date that includes the surrounding backticks. We could try doing this. But that doesn't work. 
At this point, you're probably thinking, oh, no problem, just put double quotes around this. Let's do that. Wait, it still doesn't work. The reason is because in the shell that I'm using, backticks have a special meaning, and they will still be interpreted even when they're inside double quotes. To make things more clear, let's do an echo statement with the same word date surrounded by backticks. And here you go, that's what we were actually repping for. To solve this problem, in my shell, I can use single quotes instead of double quotes. And if you update the grep statement, and now it works. It's not just backticks that can cause you a problem either. This simple echo statement will echo the letters ASDF. If we pipe that into grep and search for A, as you might expect, it matches the line. Now, if we wanted to use a regular expression to find anything that starts with an A, followed by any number of characters, you might use a regular expression like this. And this works just as you expect. But let's try doing something really random now. Let's create a file called a.txt in this directory. This folder only contains two files now. If we run this exact same command, it doesn't work anymore. This is literally the exact same command that we ran up here. The first time it output something, but this time it didn't. Maybe the file a.txt has something to do with making our grep command not work. Let's delete it. And then run the command again. Look at that, it works. So the presence of this file causes this grep statement to not work. How could that even be possible? The answer has to do with shell globbing. In fact, this problem is confusing enough that I actually made another video specifically dedicated to this topic. In that video, I discussed how this problem can cause you to get the wrong results when using the find command if you're not careful. The issue is that when the star character appears unquoted and unescaped on the command line, it will first go through the globbing algorithm. This is where the shell itself tries to interpret the star character. What it does is try to find files that match the globbing pattern. Globbing is different from regular expressions. The key idea is that in this case, the star character is interpreted twice, once by the shell and then once by grep itself. In this case, if the star character doesn't end up matching any files in the current directory, it will be passed unchanged to the grep command. However, if this pattern does match a file in the current directory, this pattern will be replaced by the file or file names that match the pattern. So if we add that extra file back, and then run this grep command again, but instead put our file name in the echo statement, now you can see why it matches. The next problem is one that's not specific to grep, and it's more of a general regular expression problem, but I'll include it here because it's just so common to do this. Let's say we're building a regular expression pattern to match decimal numbers. In our case, we want to match any number of digits followed by a period, then followed by any number of digits again. If you run this on a small test example, you'll find that it works. Maybe we're finished. But if we test with another pattern that's not a decimal number, it still matches. What's the problem? The issue is with the period character. It's easy to forget that a period in regular expressions doesn't always mean an actual period character. Therefore, you have to escape it. Now you can see that our pattern doesn't match what we don't want, and it does match what we do want. In the next example, we have a file containing tab delimited data with two columns. Let's say that we wanted to use grep to search for the first column by extracting anything up to the first tab character you might try something like this. But this answer is totally wrong. What just happened? The problem here goes back to the issue we discussed before. Basic regular expressions in grep are fairly primitive. In fact, if you check the standard, there's no support for escape tab characters. This can be very confusing with GNU grep because basic regular expressions don't have documented support for the space character class. However, GNU grep confusingly does support this with basic regular expressions. However, when we tried to use the escape tab character, 
what we got was anything up to the last t character. Switching to extended regular expressions doesn't solve this problem. Since extended regular expressions are still very primitive. In fact, with basic regular expressions, these are the only escapable characters that are supported. For extended regular expressions, these are the only characters that are supported. The only reasonable solution here is to use Perl compatible regular expressions instead of basic or extended. This provides us with the result that we expect. Here's an example that you won't encounter that often, but the first time you do, you'll find it very confusing to figure out what's going on. Here we have two files containing some text. Let's look at the first file. All right, just a hello world statement. And let's look at the second file. Another hello world statement. So both of these files contain hello world statements. Let's use grep to search for the word world here. That's strange. Only file one shows in the results. File two isn't here. Let's double check it. That looks fine, what's going on? Maybe if we use cat. All right, there's the word world. It's definitely in this file. You can use the file command to identify the types of files. This will make the source of the problem a bit more clear. Here's something interesting. This file is just ASCII text, but this one is little indian utf16. Let's look at the binary data for these two files. Here we go. Both of them contain the statement hello world. But the utf16 file has what looks like null characters between every character. Actually, these nulls are not separate. In fact, with UTF-16, each character is represented by at least two bytes. It just happens to be the case that ASCII characters encoded in UTF-16 start with a byte that corresponds to an ASCII character identical to its ASCII encoding. For ASCII characters, the second byte of the UTF-16 encoding will be a null character. When we use cat to print this file to the terminal, the null characters don't get printed so we end up seeing output that looks almost identical to that of a normal ASCII file. The only difference is these weird question mark characters at the start. The question marks that appear here are actually these FF and FE characters. This is called a byte order marker, and this is one of the things that the file command uses to identify the type of the file. So if we go back to the original problem, how do we use grep to search for this word in all of the files that are present? This turns out to be one of the cases where grep isn't really a great solution. One way would be to use the P flag to escape the null characters that appear after every one of the ASCII characters in our search pattern. This method of escaping characters is not available with the dash E flag or with basic regular expression mode. If we try the search again, it doesn't find anything. If you check the man page for grep, you'll find the dash A option that lets you process binary files as if they were text. Let's try adding that flag. And look at that, we finally found it. One problem with this method is that we can't use the same search pattern for both files. This does make sense, since we're really doing two different search problems here. One is searching for text in traditional ASCII, and the other is searching for text encoded as UTF-16. One possible solution is to use the iconf command, which can convert our file2.txt from UTF-16 to UTF-8. Now we have three files present we can use the file command to check the file type of all of them. As we saw a second ago, file 3 is just a copy of file 2, but with a different encoding. Now we can go back and use our original grep statement. Look at that, there's our two results. 